Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my midweek vlog for the fifth Sunday in Lent. My goodness, five Sundays gone already. Sat here, these beautiful flowers from Mavis Cornell's funeral, one of our absolute gems, one of our little angels. Um, flowers still going well, still reminds us through, actually important reminder, um, when I had children in the other day talking about the Easter story, I used these flowers to remind us of the great hope of Easter, that we are lifted into God's eternal love. And we've gone through um, the weeks uh, that we had a time for wilderness, a time to hope, a time to be real, a time to be loved, and today a time to be lifted up. And I was warning people on Sunday, there's a danger sometimes, you know, your clergy, how we have our own particular um, things which we find important and uh, you have to be very careful that you're not overly influenced by your priests, that your priests actually encourage you to explore your own faith and the things that matter to you. But um, it's quite interesting sat here actually and looking over my shoulder that you know the cross massively important in my faith, Holy Scripture, prayer, the prayer hands um, and caring for those who we love. Um, even to the point of losing them from our lives. And you can see just above me the beautiful reredos of the Last Supper. And the Eucharist has become such a beautiful thing in my own life and ministry. But this reading from John's Gospel is one of my favourites. And one of those passages of scripture which actually speaks into my own understanding of God. And it comes from the 12th chapter of John and these are the words. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love, their, who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rulers of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. It's a really interesting short passage of John's Gospel and, and it, it kind of has so much that is going on within it. People want to see Jesus. They've heard about him. They've heard about the things that he has done. They've heard about the things that he has said and they want to see him. And it's not just people, Jewish people now, people from the Judaic tradition, it's Greeks have come. They want to see him as well. There's an excitement, there's an energy. We want to see him. We want to encounter him. It seems to trigger something in him. His focus becomes very clear. Now his hour has come. He will be glorified and he will glorify the Father through his actions. He is confident. He talks about a grain of wheat that needs to fall for it to really uh, grow and prosper. And then um, a call to serve in verse uh, 25 to 26. Those who love their life will lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. And it says that when a grain of wheat it dies, and it bears much fruit. Called to serve and to bear fruit. And Jesus is 
confident, isn't he? Unlike the Garden of Gethsemane where, you know, take this cup from me. In this passage from John, you know, take, what, what am I to say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I've come. Glorify, gl Father, glorify your name. And God speaks and the crowd think it's thunder. Um, and God says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Wonderful. And then we come to God's purposes revealed. And for someone like myself, this passage from John's Gospel is a really theologically important. Um, this idea that Jesus says, when I am lifted from the earth, I will gather all people to myself. I don't set exclusive boundaries. I don't say if you've done this or you've done that. The gospel clearly says, I will draw all people to myself. It's a, it's a, for me, it's, it's a powerfully beautiful image of God. God's desire through the cross is to lift all people into his love, not to, to create an exclusive club, not to create boundaries that exclude people, but through this cross, through his death, through his resurrection, God will gather up all people into his love. It's a really encouraging scripture. But it's also interesting, actually, that, that in a sense, it's the, it's the build-up to Jesus's crucifixion, isn't it? But if you turn this reading round, it then challenges us in our own lives. So from the cross, we go back. And it's about listening to God. The crowd heard God's voice, but didn't really understand what it was. And it's really important for us to, to listen to God. And we can do that through Holy Scripture. We can do that through the words of encouragement from other people. We can do that from listening to sermons or for people speaking on the radio. But we need to listen to God. And for some, the, the wonderful gift of feeling God's words in their hearts and in their minds. We need to listen to God. What is it that God is saying to us? Serving God, Jesus said, didn't he, that, you know, we must bear fruit. The the wonderful thing of being God's people and having the, the privilege of serving, of being at the heart of our three communities and opening our doors and our hearts to those whom we live among. Um, bearing fruit, people will see our faith through the things that we do. Our actions will bear fruit. People will encounter love. People will... Um, see uh, God's love through the things that we do and the world will be a better place, the communities will be a better place. And like the, those Greeks, they wanted to see Jesus. How do we, through our listening to God, through serving God, through bearing fruit, how do we, or how does that enable people to come and ask, we want to see Jesus? And it's one of the great tragedies again this year. Last year, we had no Easter at all. This year, it's a kind of limited and again we can't throw our doors open so that people can sing their hearts out for this so that people can hear the gospel proclaimed it's a real tragedy in a sense but 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 we're getting there aren't we you know we're going to be there before long we'll be back to our busy churches and our busy lives but but the thing for me and the most important thing and it, and it's become after much soul searching um coming through different traditions that i have is that image of god saying I want to draw all people to me. I want everybody to encounter me, to know me, to love me, so that I can love them as well. It's a wonderful image from John chapter 12. So this is a time for all of us to be lifted up, a time for us to immerse ourselves in the purposes of the cross through Holy Week and Easter. It's a chance for us to listen afresh to God, to serve God, to bear fruit in the kingdom and help others to see Jesus. So can I commend to you Holy Week? Lots going on, things to watch online. Um, but most of all, let's pray for each other. Let's love each other. Let's bear that fruit and come to the cross confident that we will all be lifted into God's marvellous love. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's been a wonderful privilege to journey through Lent together, to reflect on the wilderness, to reflect upon hope and love, 
to face the realities of what it means to be your church. And today, Lord, to be encouraged that you will lift all of us. And in fact, today, Lord, lift our hearts, lift our minds, so that we all will be gathered into your incredible and glorious love. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your hope and guide us and lead us through Holy Week. And guide us and lead us, Lord, as we now come, hopefully, to the end of this lockdown and we start to see each other. And guide us and lead us, Lord, as we journey through spring, through that colour, through those scents. And may your peace be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hopefully you've got the bulletin sheet. You know what's going on through Holy Week. Again, to say if you come into things to let the wardens know so that you can book in. If you're watching at home, we're going to record, um, I'll record my vlog next week. And we will also record... Um, the Saturday night Easter service to be published on Easter Sunday morning, so there'll be a service. We've recorded Palm Sunday this morning, so there's a Palm Sunday service. And if you want uh, a Palm Cross, um, we'll try and get one to you. Can you let us know? That would be really good. Not long now, we'll all be back together. We'll all be able to, so many people now going for their second jabs. It's a really exciting, positive time. And can I pray that God will bless you? So let's finish with words of blessing. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless everybody. Speak soon.